In this video, we will explain velocity and special relativity. In classical mechanics, velocity is defined as the time derivative of the position vector. In special relativity, we use a similar expression. But instead of a time derivative, we use a derivative with respect to the proper time tau. Since proper time does not change after a Lorentz transformation, u mu will transform in the same way as x mu does, which makes u mu a 4 vector. If you use the time derivative instead, u mu would not be a 4 vector. The derivative with respect to proper time can be rewritten as gamma times the usual time derivative. And since x mu contains t and x, we can perform this time derivative. The zero component of u mu is given by gamma times c, and the spatial components of u mu are given by gamma times the usual velocity v. That's why we use a different symbol to denote velocity and special relativity. It would be a bit confusing to have an equation v equals gamma times v. Let us now look at the length of this 4 vector u mu. In order to square a 4 vector, we contract an upper index with a lower index. The 4 vector with a lower index is actually given by the metric times a 4 vector with an upper index. So this yields gamma squared times c squared minus v squared. We can use the definition of gamma to write the expression like this such that only c squared remains in the end. This result that the square of the 4 velocity is always equal to the speed of light squared is rather noteworthy. Using the 4 velocity, we are able to derive the addition of relativistic velocities. Imagine that some particle travels with the 4 velocity u1. We now look at this particle from another reference frame such that the frame with the particle moves along the x-axis to the right with v2. In classical mechanics, we could add these two vectors. But in special relativity, we have to be more careful when we want to find the resulting velocity. In order to change our point of view from the first reference frame to the other, we must put the first one at rest such that our new reference frame actually moves to the left with velocity v2. We can now get the resulting velocity u3 as the Lorentz transformation of u1. The corresponding boost velocity is minus v2. This minus sign is important, since our new reference frame moves to the left compared to the original one. Usually the transformation matrix lambda looks like this, where beta and gamma are useful abbreviations. This means for a boost velocity minus v2, we get a plus sign here and here. If you go ahead and do this matrix multiplication, you will find a result like this. If we write the four components of the four vector separately, we get these four equations. The first one gives us a way to express gamma 3, which enables us to remove it from the rest of the equations by dividing by gamma 3. This result corresponds to the well-known equations for the addition of relativistic velocities. You can check that if the particle already travels with the speed of light, the new velocity v3, as viewed from the new frame of reference, cannot be faster than the speed of light. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching!